Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be continuing chapter 15 from IB Math Studies and this chapter is on trigonometry. Now in this particular video we're going to focus on various examples, especially the most common problems in trigonometry uh, using geometric figures. Now we're going to be focusing on 2D geometry in this video. Next video is going to be about 3D geometry. So I'm going to show you some of the more common questions and also show you how to solve them. And let's actually start with the first question that's right here from your book. And this is example five from page 454. So it's giving you a triangle that is not a right triangle. And it's asking you to find the unknowns in the following diagram. So the only unknown here is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually right here, it's X. So it's asking you to find this side and this is an isosceles triangle meaning that these two sides are actually equal but um, the only thing we have is we have this side and we have this angle so here's the thing whenever you see an angle right away you need to know that you have to use trigonometry you have to use sine cosine or tangent as soon as there is an angle of any kind this is where trigonometry comes into play so before we start though we need to figure this out how do we actually solve this well you need to make this into a right triangle how well Isosceles triangle, if you were to draw a line right here, would be divided into two right triangles. This is a right triangle, and so is this. So now we're looking at a triangle, and if we actually, let's move it here just so it's a little bit more clear. Uh, we have a triangle that kind of looks like this. We have, this is a right triangle that has side X that we're looking for. Then we have this bottom part, and this bottom part is right here and this is actually half of this right this is only the half so it's actually only five this is only five centimeters and of course we then have our other leg and the right angle so this leg we don't really know and we don't really need we have two values here we have the the bottom leg oh and of course we have the angle i forgot the angle we have the angle right here and this angle is 67 degrees now this is actually i've just flipped this by turning this whole triangle uh by 90 degrees counterclockwise just so it's, it looks a little bit better but basically this is what it looks like and there's actually two of these halves right there's two triangles like this and we're looking for this x so how do we find x well we have the angle we have the side that's adjacent to the angle and we have hypotenuse which is x so if you remember uh, which which value do we use if it's adjacent? Well, that's of course cosine. So here what you can write is that cosine of 67 degrees equals to equals to 5 divided by hypotenuse, right? Divided by x. So in other words, the this angle here, the cosine of this angle equals to this side divided by this side. That was that's what we've learned in the previous video. So now what we have to find is X. We need to find X. How do we find it? Well, this is where rearrangement comes in. This is actually a chapter that we did a long time ago, formula rearrangement. So to find X, we first have to multiply both sides by X. Multiply both sides by X. That's step number one. And step number two is divide both sides by, divide by cosine of 67. So it's two steps actually. Or if you want to take a shortcut, you can actually just just switch these two figures, switch their places. You can actually just do that. And what you'll get is you'll get this. You'll get x equals to 5 divided by cosine of 67 degrees. Uh, and in other words, x equals 2. Let's go to a calculator. And you can just do it right here, right away. 5 divided by cosine of 67 will give us 12.8 approximately. Approximately 12.8. So x equals to x equals to 12.8 centimeters. And that is the final answer for this question. So um, how do we solve this question? Well, first we realize that there is a right triangle inside. You just have to find it. And then we try to divide this whole thing into a right triangle realize that the angle that we're given gives us a cosine of these two sides and a basic ratio of these two sides and then since this is x we just have to try to find x by uh, by rearranging the formula 
And this is how all of the questions and all of the problems in this particular subchapter will work. First step is always find the right triangles and then try to figure out what you're given and try to use sine, cosine and tangent to find what is missing. So let's actually take a look at another problem or specifically let's, um, let's actually take a look at various possible problems by looking at the following um, examples. Now these are actually the possible problems you'll see on your test and in the future. Uh, basically all of these figures have right triangles inside of them. So if you if you're given a rectangle remember that uh, you can find a right triangle by drawing a diagonal right like that like so just more straight than mine and here we go here's the right triangle and then you can basically work with sine cosine and tangent using this right triangle if you have a rhombus um, a rhombus has diagonals that actually cross in such a way that they create four four uh, right triangles you create four right triangles and all of these triangles are actually congruent they're actually equal so all of these four triangles are equal and basically that's how rhombus works for tra trapezoids um, you have to remember that if you draw a height of a trapezoid just like that and like this it will also give you it will basically give you three figures it will give you two right triangles which may or may not be equal but chances are they're not going to be equal and then there's also of course a rectangle right here in the middle which you can then also divide into more right triangles by doing diagonal again. So there's actually four right triangles inside and these two will be congruent, they'll be equal. And lastly we have kite and for kite um, same thing here, diagonals will actually um, cross in such a way that they'll create four right triangles but this time they're not going to be equal. Um, these two red triangles they're going to be equal to each other but these two purple triangles these two purple triangles they are going to be uh, equal but different from these two so that's that's a kite and so for kite and rhombus you have to remember that their diagonals will form um, right triangles you're also very likely to see circles and specifically circle theorems and that's uh, the more difficult part of geometry. Let me show you some of the more, more common examples. So if you have a circle, and this is, uh, this is the example we're going to use, if you have a circle right here, uh, you may have something called chord. Now what is a chord? Chord is basically uh, a line just like, here's, here's another chord, I'm going to just draw it just to show you an example. It's a line that connects two sides of a circle uh, just like this. It's basically, it uh, touches the circle in two parts and it's a line and obviously the longest possible chord is called diameter. So if we were to draw diameter that would be the longest possible chord but it doesn't have to be that long, it can be just th this as well. So if you draw a chord, if you draw a chord and this is a chord right here um, and then you draw the uh, line from radius down to chord so that it forms a 90 degree angle it will form two triangles and the thing is that in this particular example if this is a chord and this is a 90 degree angle then these two sides will be actually equal these two sides are equal and so are these two sides these two sides are actually radius these two sides are radius so they're also equal so these are equal triangles these are equal sides and these are equal sides as well so a possible question here might give you an angle right here. This might be the angle that, that's given to you and you may actually have to find the length of a chord or something. So what you could do here is um, assuming that you know the radius of the triangle, if you, uh, sorry not, uh, not the triangle but the radius of the circle, um, as long as you know the radius and you have this angle you can basically then use uh, the sine because this is the opposite divided by hypotenuse. The sign of this particular angle to find your missing um, your missing x which is right here. There's actually going to be an example that we're going to take a look at that's very similar to this. Uh, also if you have a tangent and tangent is of course a line that touches a circle in only one point if you have a tangent every tangent which is this is a tangent right here every tangent always forms a 90 degree angle with the radius this is always 90 degree angle. So if you have a tangent to a circle, it will automatically form this type of triangle right here. This is a right triangle and you may have to uh, use 
sines, cosines, and tangents, depending on what's, what's asked of you, but you may have to use like this radius here, for example, to find one of these sides or something. Uh, so this is very possible that you'll, you'll see this as well. But just remember that the tangent always forms 90 degrees with the radius. And the last uh, example from the circles we're going to take a look at is when you have two tangents. So if you have a two tangents that actually intersect in one point somewhere outside of circle, if you have something like this, they will actually form two right triangles. There's going to be a right triangle right here, right here, and another one right here. And these two right triangles are going to be equal. They're going to be congruent. So uh, there's a right angle right here, and there's a right angle right here. So that's basically the circle examples. And we're going to take a look at, a, at one of them right now, actually. So let's take a look at this one example. So here's the example we're going to take a look at. It's actually right here, example eight. A chord of a circle subtends an angle of 112 degrees at its center. So some of you may find this word difficult, but what it means is it actually just means creates or makes an angle of 112 degrees. Find the length of the chord if the radius of a circle is 6.5 centimeters. So let's try to draw this so we actually understand what's going on. So let's draw a circle best we can. And we have a chord in that circle. So I'm going to draw a chord right here. And what happens is this uh, chord creates an angle of 112 degrees to its center. So from here to here, this angle right here is 112 degrees. And this is what we have. This is our picture. We also know the radius. Radius is 6.5. So this and also this, so these two sides are equal. These two sides are radius and it's 6.5 centimeters. You have to find the length of the chord. So our chord right here is our X. How do we find it? So let's actually zoom in on what's happening here and try to figure it out. So if you were to look at this much closer and here, I'm just going to redraw this a little bit of a bigger size. So here we go. So we have something that looks like this. This is a triangle, obviously. We need to make right triangles. Now remember, if you draw the line that goes like that, basically a bisector, you will create two right triangles, right? This is what we did in this example. Create two right triangles, which are actually congruent. Now this right here is the radius. This is 6.5. And this angle, this whole angle is 112. Now, because it's a bisector, all bisectors divide both the line and the angle uh, by by two, basically. They, they have things. So bisector here will make this angle half of 112. What's half of 112? Well, I think it's 56. So this angle is 56 degrees. And so is this angle here. Now we have a right triangle with 56 degree angle and we, we know it's hypotenuse. We are looking for this length and this length is x. Now, we can find this tiny part, right? This, this tiny part we can find. Uh, this is actually x divided by 2. If you think about it, this is actually x divided by 2 because it's half of this whole length. So let's, let's do this. So we have an angle, we have the opposite side, and we have hypotenuse. This, of course, calls for a sine. So we have to find, uh, or basically let's rewrite this first, sine of 56 equals to uh, this side here, and I'll just call it for now at least, let's call it x prime just to make it a little bit easier. x prime equals to half of x. x prime divided by 6.5. How do we find x here? Well, if we multiply both sides by 6.5, it will give us x. So x prime equals to sine of 56 multiplied by 6.5. Multiplied by 6.5. Uh, and this will give us, and let's do this on a calculator. So we have uh, 6.5 times sine of 56. And the answer is 5.4-ish, 5.39 actually. So this equals to 5.39. And of course, this equals to x divided by 2. So to find x, we multiply this by 2. And finally, this will give us the value of x as 2 times 5.39 or approximately 10.78. So this whole x is 10.78. So this is how you work with circles and uh, various circle theorems. 
And let's actually take a look at another example that's very similar. And when I say something similar, I don't really mean similar. I mean something that is very, very common that you most likely are going to see on a test or will have to do at some point uh, in one of the examples. So basically finding heights of objects or possibly distance to an object if you have their height. Now you have to be very comfortable doing this because you'll see this a lot. So here's a tree. We need to find the height. We have this angle here and we have the distance to the tree. What can we possibly use? So remember that we are looking for uh, the specific ratio that we can use to find the missing value. So um, if this is a right triangle, you basically have to imagine this is a right triangle. Think of what you have and what you're given and what you're looking for. Now, do we have hypotenuse? No, we don't. We don't have hypotenuse at all. This is not given to us. So we don't have no hypotenuse. So we have to use the only other possible value that uh, or ratio that we're familiar with. And that, of course, is a tangent. So in this case, uh, what is tangent? Well, tangent of this angle, tangent of 52 degrees will, of course, give us the opposite side, which is H divided by 12.4. And essentially what you want to do now is rearrange this again, multiply both sides by 12.4 to get H equals to 12.4 times tangent of 52. Now notice how I actually decided to put number first and tangent next because um, I made this mistake in the past when I, if I were to do on my calculator, at least if I were to do, uh, if I were to do tangent of 52 multiplied by 12.4, what you'll notice is that I won't, I'll get the wrong answer because my calculator thinks that I'm actually multiplying this first and then taking the tangent. It gives me a negative value. I've seen this many, many times. So, uh, to avoid this mistake, try to do number first, do the number first. So 12.4 and then multiply it by the tangent. Multiply it by tangent of 52, and this will give you the correct value, which is 15.9. So the height of this tree is 15.9 meters. And this is how you do the height problem. So get very comfortable doing these, you'll see them a lot. All right, so let's pause this video here, and hopefully this was clear and gave you an idea of how to do these trigonometric questions using geometric figures. In the next video, we're going to take a look at 3D shapes and how to do this in 3D environment. Anywho, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and good luck to you. Bye-bye.